Me, I thought we picked up a lot of people um, on, on our tours that wouldn't go to the theater. Either they feel their their social barriers or economic barriers or just cultural barriers. People, I think, have a prejudice against art in general. So it was great. We we were, we were we were generating new audiences, unsuspecting audiences. You know, people will come along and see these performances in alleyways or by bushes or over by the river. And when there's a crowd, people tend to follow. The fun and the challenge of doing the alley waltzes in many ways is adapting to your environment and having street lights uh, at, at, available. You know, asking a neighbor, would you turn on your light at 10 o'clock and shine it? And, and people are usually very helpful about it. Or using car lights or, you know, just scrounging and making things happen. It gives it very um, organic. <laughs> oh, oh. We've been using things we call incidentals, so usually while we're touring, we'll have little surprises. So people aren't sure if that's incorporated in the waltz or if that's real life. So we like to blur those lines a little, which is, can be good and can be challenging. Children would be worth more than their meat, eh? <laughs> There's a line between private and public space that I think is sort of important to claim. You know, there are, there are little throughways that people take, you know, shortcuts, you know, little migratory paths. Mm -hmm. And I think we own those publicly in many ways. If you own a structure in a building, it's yours, but we have to live with it. We have to see it and engage with it. And, you know, sometimes they're ugly and oppressive or they're... So to be able to transform that and transform it in our minds, I think we, we should have the right. So we just do it, frankly. We just take it. And, uh, and no harm is ever done. There's no harm to be done. And it's kept the, this community growing, a uh, community of, of theater makers. And I think that's great. I had some parents ask me if it was scary. And I said, yes, it's scary. The ogre is going to be scary. Mm -hmm. And they were debating that. And I thought, you know, it's good to be scared as a kid. It's very cathartic. Mm -hmm. There are a lot, there are so many scary things. <laughs> so this ogre, 18 feet high, marching down the street. I mean, it's in the world of make-believe. It's theater. It's cardboard. It's, but it was scary. And he's defeated. And he dies. And that's it. The child wins. And he succeeds. And I think, I think it's okay, but I think scaring kids and, let it, and letting it be released and, re and resolved is good. I think it's healthy. Mm -hmm. I think with a lot of small towns, the alleyways are really evocative. We, there's, a, there's more history left. Everything else sort of been, you know, destroyed, a lot of the history, but in the back alleys is often where the history sort of remains. I'd like to, uh, my, in my wildest dreams, my, I would love to travel, and this is the most selfish, I mean, I, would, I want to travel, I would love to see the world, go to smaller towns and do a residency and get kids and youth involved in making the story and building the set and touring around and finding the secret interesting spots, meeting people, meeting storytellers and, and actors and, and just letting this happen. You know, it's like the magic beam and just going and just planting it and, and facilitating that and letting that happen in different communities. I think would be pretty great. Uh,